Now, if you are going to uh, make some kind of architectural scene, it could be indoor or outdoor, there's a big chance that you want the scene to be alive. And to be alive, you often need stuff to fill in the scene, to make some uh, fullness in the background or so on. And uh, for bringing more life to a scene like this, this could also mean flowers and pottery and stuff like that. I'm not going to show you how you can model flowers and so on, because there's a lot of great tools for that out there, but I am going to show you here how you can make some different kind of pottery for use for indoor and outdoors. And I'm going to make a very simple model to start on, and I'm then going to show you how you can evolve on this simple model to make a more and more advanced pottery. So using a base model to make several different uh, types of pottery. So to start with here, I'm going to zoom in so I get some decent measurements. I'm going to zoom to a grid size of one centimeter down here, and I'm going to make a very simple disc here in the top view. And I'm going to center it, of course, and I'm go going to set this for eight sides because I'm going to do all this with sub patching. So I will then drag this up a bit here. We can rise it from the ground and press space. I'm then going to polygon mode. I'm then going to use bevel, B for bevel. And I'm going to drag in like this. And I'm going to right click to make a new bevel and I'm going to shape down here. Right click to make a new bevel and shape down here. Right click again to go in here. I'm then going to press space and deselect this. And I'm going to select the top polygon here, B for bevel. I'm going to make an edge here. Right click again to make a new bevel. Right click again. And as you see here, I'm going to shape a very simple part to start on. Right click again, and I'm going to right click again to make this centering here. I'm then going to, while this is selected, hold down the shift key, select the bottom one. I'm going to construct and to bridge. This is going to form a nice hole down here, and I can then deselect and we now have a very simple part here. I know this is very simple and it has some very sharp edges, but uh, again, this is the base model. If I hit the tab key now, you'll see it becomes rather soft when smooth, smoothened out by some patches. But this is the base shape, so we're going to continue on this. So first I want to sharpen the edges here, so I'm going to take this model here, as this is our base model, copy it into a new layer, and then I'm going to use my edge tool here to select the edges I want to be sharp. So I select the two edges here, and I press the right arrow key. This is going to select all the way around, and I'm going to continue like this, for where I want to have the sharp edges both on the outside and on the inside. So I select the two lines, edges next to each other and right arrow key like this. And I also want to select the bottom one here. Like this. And finally, this one. 
Now I have selected some edges, but not all, as you see. I will then go into Multiply, and I will run, zoom in here a bit, and run the chamfer tool here to give this a little bit of an edge. Just a little bit. I'm then going to press Space to deselect the tool, and I'm going to click down here to deselect all. A to fit view, and now when I press the Tab key, we have a pot that looks a lot better. But we can again copy this pot to next. I'm going to select polygons first, copy, paste, and we can now continue on this one. Of course, now you could take this pot here and you can make it lower if you needed that. That would be a very simple modification. We can try this. And I will then take the top here and also make this a bit lower. Then already we have another part. I could then copy this into the next layer here. I'll deselect my tab tool here, sub patch, and I will knife across here a few times. So Shift K for the knife tool, and I will hold down Control key to make a straight line. And I will just cut here and here. And I will then lasso these, go to Modify, Stretch, and I will expand this center here, and I will stretch down here, like this. Space to deselect the tool, deselect the polygons, and we now got a new part. I could then again have shaped this differently, cover this to a new layer, select again, and I could have stretched this in like this, and I could have selected the bottom, and I could have Stretch it in even more and make this a little bit thinner and I would have a new shape. Again, one of all the other basics uh, in the flower pots could be taking this one here, copying this again up here. I'm then going to disable sub patching and I'm going to knife this several times like this, in an even pattern, like this. I'm then going to do it again, right on top of this, like this. I'm then going to select all this and stretch this down just a little bit. I'm going to deselect this, stretch it down just a little bit, deselect this, stretch it down just a little bit, and again, like this. And if I hit the tab key now, I got another type of pottery. I think perhaps this here is a bit thick to the pot with this look, so I can select the outer polygons here like this, and I could shrink them in a bit like this and perhaps lower this a bit, like this, and I got a nice new pottery, and again, like I did on the first model, if I'd like these to be more sharp, I could always go in here and select the edges, 
I'll just do it on the outside now. Right arrow key. Right arrow key. Right arrow key. Right arrow key. And then give this a little bit of chamfer. Because the closer the distance uh, is between the points, the sharper the edges you're going to get. So, as you see now, we get some very sharp edges. So, within a few minutes, we have made a base model. This one, this one, very simple. This one, this one, and this one, out of the same model. Again, you can start taking the base model here. Let's take this one, copy this to a new layer. I'm then going to use the sub pitches as a tool. Right now we had eight sides to this, but if I now go to sub patch division, pressing the O key, I set this to three, it will be sub subdivided less. And if I then freeze the object using Control D, I get a lot of polygons and a little rough model, but I can use this because I can now go to its mode and I can select my edges here and I'll select every other edge here all the way around. of clicking here but again it's only a few minutes and you can always save the base part and then save all these separately and then soon you will have a big gallery of pottery to select for to see what fits your scene and in a second we're done like this and I am then going to guess what stretch and I'm going to stretch this in again like this and what do we get? We get nice pottery and if you see this we can start to advance this again go into polygon mode copy, paste, and I could select all this and I could choose to twist this to get a different look. I could of course control my twist using the right mouse here to select where would the twist be using the points here I can place little twist there and big twist here let's just center this and twist again and this will give a little bit of look like this so you can keep advancing like this from your base object and make more and more details. And of course, this technique could be used for several other objects. Good luck!